does charity and business work? What business would you set up if you could start again? And could we help you make more money today? It's Any Business Questions. Any Business Questions visits the UK's top business networking events to find the best people to share ideas about business with. It's a chance to see the value of networking, discussing ideas, learning tips and having a bit of fun too. Don't forget to join us at the community afterwards to find out the next filming date and to discuss ideas in the show. Hello and welcome. As a business, I'm sure you've been asked to donate to charity, probably many times. But does it make good business sense to do it, or does that even matter? It's up then that we've come to a charity business networking event today to discuss this topic and more. And with me today are my panellists, who are all visitors to the Latin Parties UK Fun Networking Meeting in aid of, and in fact, I'm going to leave this to the organiser, Martha, yes. just to tell us the, the whole event that's going on around us at the moment. What was it for? What was it in aid of? Well, Latin Parties UK is um, a corporate organiser and we thought that giving to charity is the best way to bring people together and to have a fun networking meeting, which really we need a bit more here in the UK. We've been playing with balloons. Yes. All of us have been playing with balloons. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Uh, Putting the music, the Latin music, all these games, team team building activities is the bonding. We need bonding in in networking. That's what we we are doing. Just very quickly though, we're going to talk about charity in a second anyway, but just tell us what the charity is that we were supporting yes. today. Yes, it's called Help Women and Children, and we work in Peru and we work in the UK. In Peru, we sponsor children who are uh, very deprived, and they are deprived from the education, so we pay the whole year education, school education for them. Okay. Martha, we started with you, so just tell us a bit about your business as well. Yes, uh, Latin Parties UK uh, bring the joy to every meeting. It could be business meetings, a party, a corporate party, a birthday party, for 15 minutes to up to four hours depending on what you the company really wants and bring the bonding as I said before is the key thing to work together in peace and f- happiness the fun stuff isn't Absolutely. it okay yeah. let me introduce Sanal um, just tell us a bit about your business as well um, my business is in wellness so I look after people's um, skin care nutrition and I also look after them energetically so to see whether they have any ailments and help a person to live a healthier life okay Okay, and Neville, tell us about yourself. Yes, um, my business is called Think Slim and Trim, and it's based around the well-being and uh, wellness industry, where I try and show people what's going on inside their body through something called a wellness profile, and it's a starting point mm. for them to understand how to take themselves to the best health. You scared the life out of me um, not that long ago <laughs> when we picked up a packet of biscuits and you told me just how much sugar was in there. Uh, yes. And that, that was really depressing. Because depressing? <laughs> but hopefully useful. Well, yeah, no, no, I think you gave me the right message on that one. Um, and also, my name's Richard Mitz, and I'm from shoutpow.com, a social media company who are producing this show. So we've got a number of questions over the next couple of minutes, and we'll finish off also with each of our panellists giving you some specific tips from their industry that you can use in your business today. But let's get to this first question, which was raised by David in Chelmsford, who runs a building supplies firm. Now, he says he gets approached all the time by charities, and he would love to give all to them he'd love to give all the money to them um, but he's got to think about his business too and what he can get from it as well so he wants to ask the panel how do you think charity and business works best together and how do you pick who you help or who you give to um, let's start with you Martin yeah. because obviously you're so involved with charity here. yes so why why did you think pick this particular charity and how does it relate to your business yes I think people need to pick a charity uh, the charity that is in your heart really either you have uh, and, uh, a member of your family ill or you think that uh, resolving problems in poverty or health in my case is taking people out of the circle of poverty any person who uh, is born in poverty will be poor, poor, uh, uh, poor the, the next next generation and through organizing these meetings and giving all the money to this charity we will help more people, not only one child, but the whole of the community to come out of poverty. I mean, one of the things, obviously, we're, we're all in business. Yeah. We're working tremendous hours a day. We don't have a lot of time, mm. and yet we all want to help charities. So is there a good way that we can get that partnership between business and charities? Yeah, marketing. Through helping a charity, which is in your heart, mm. you will get more marketing through your business. So you help people, and you get also the revenue of 
happy putting your name at the front of the marketing. Mm. I mean, you're obviously very much involved in the sort of the wellness health area, and there's a lot of charity involvement, a lot of charities helping people out in that. What's your relationship with charity in that sense? Um, my relationship is uh, very similar to Martha there, is to definitely choose something that means a lot to you, uh, whether it be personal reason or something we'll leave a legacy for, or something like that. Um, but I am very much um, filtered in... I don't just want to give money to a charity. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. want to know where it goes. And more importantly, is there something I can input yes. aside from just the money? Yes. Because yes, then right. you know exactly what's going on in the charity, mm. how it, all the money's working mm. and what the results are. Because mm. unfortunately, there is a lot of news nowadays about money going astray in mm. bigger mm. charities. That's right, yeah. Um, so that's why I'm quite strict with one or two that I know exactly what's going on. Yeah. There, was a, there was a very interesting article, and I'm trying to remember the lady's name. She's a, a property developer from Ireland, and she was saying the other day that when you pick a charity for business, uh, you want, as you just said, you want to be able to feel that you can actually put something into it. Yeah. Because you could just give money, mm -hmm. but is that actually going to make a difference? And if you're bringing professional skills, particularly into a charity that's run by a group of very well-meaning volunteers, mm -hmm. but maybe don't have quite that structure in place to yeah. really benefit from it, then that's something we can all bring yeah. in, isn't and, it? Yeah, and, and something that we really need to take into account is that Helping a small charities is what's the difference, is exactly what you were saying, Neville. Big, big, big charities, we really don't know if it's going to a salary or whatever it go, is going. When it's a small, tiny charity like I am running in Peru, you know that the money goes directly there because all of us are volunteers. So, you really, you're looking at an ideal charity will be when it's run by volunteers or maybe one salary, the person who really need to run the charity. In our case, everybody's a volunteer. So or the money goes directly to the families and you can even meet the child that you are sponsoring. Yeah. It is amazing. You can go all the way to Peru. But I, I mean, I don't think that um, money is the only thing that you can give to a charity. Mm -hmm. You can give your time um, right. to the Volunteer. charity as well. Um, and also you find out um, what you've gone through as your past experience when you were a child. Yeah. Um, maybe you volunteer at schools mm -hmm. whereby you, you're helping children who coming out of school, what they need to do, learn life skills mm. in order for them to have um, better jobs. Well, you're so doing mentoring, aren't you? Yes, I do mentoring yeah. um, at um, a state school yeah. where you've got the, um, what I would say, some of the underachieving children where I volunteer my time in order to uh, make sure that they learn certain life skills uh, when they leave school. So yeah. it's not necessarily money. Um, and working with children, I may not get anything back for my business because I'm not talking to them about wellness, but I look at it in a different way and say, well, wellness is helping them to become better citizens of life when they leave school. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and if I can plant one seed in a child that will then help other children, then I think that's yeah. something So, that so let's sum up for David here. Well, how should he approach it? He's got all these charities coming to him. What, what do we think that he should do? First of all, look for a charity that is more appeal to him. So first of all, pick life. a charity that appeals yes, to you. Yeah. Pick one that you can get involved in That's yeah. right. don't necessarily look at it as an immediate return yeah. mm -hmm. um, you, you, you will get back from other avenues mm -hmm. I mean I've definitely found that if you give for the charity the time and the effort because you want to yeah. things happen mm -hmm. in return as a result yeah. of it yeah. the yes. contacts yeah. you make yeah. and that it, sort of things thing things like contacts yeah. so it can come from other avenues as well yeah. so. it's an interesting topic isn't it if you're just joining us right now on iTunes then uh, welcome the sound you can hear in the background is the Latin Parties UK Fun Business Networking event. It's a catchy little name, isn't it? Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's really a little bit shorter, but anyway. Uh, we're travelling around to different events around the country, and if you'd like to pose a question to a future panel, or be a guest yourself, or invite us to film at your event, whether it's a paid event or a free event, then just go to our community, go to Google Plus and type in any business questions, uh, and you, or you should find a link on Shout Pal's website as well, or around this video that you're looking at right now. Let's move on to question two, and I think this is a really good question, real fundamental business question this. Uh, what price to charge? Charlotte in Woking runs a business with five staff running children's parties and she says she wants to raise her prices but doesn't want to put off her clients. We've all got this quandary, haven't we? She asks, how do the panel pick their prices and how do you think she should approach it? Neville, let's start with you. Okay. Well, 
I mean, Charlotte wants to put up the prices, so she must have a reason, number one, for wanting to put up the prices. Mm. Um, I think nowadays everybody will expect through economics that prices will rise in the service. But more importantly for Charlotte, she needs to show the value of her service. If people value her service more, they will be willing to pay more. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the pound sign, it's what does it represent. So she needs to demonstrate. Yes, in a total, what does this service in total giving Mm. that's above maybe competition, Mm. and that's why people are happy to pay that little bit extra. Mm. But how do you then, uh, let's let's move on the mark, how do you then pick that price point though? So you've demonstrated your credibility. I mean, it sounds like she's got a successful business. She's got five people working for her. How does she then go, that's the right price? One of the the things that one do in business is always looking around as a marketing research to see how what is your competitor but that, that's not the main thing the main thing is that how, what is your service the quality of services you are giving you are not charging per hour you are charging for a package for something that is going to be worthy for the client mm. what about, I mean, you, you've had some corporate experience as well I mean, you've had the chance to move between both worlds of sort of the individual sole trader mm. and the corporate world how, how does pricing work in that respect I mean, um, you actually have to look at the end customer and the client and determine what their needs are. If you can understand what the needs of the client is, also the geographic location, what the market will bear in the area that you are in. So if you're living in an area which is where your environment and the services that you're offering to clients who really can't afford to pay that price, then you are targeting your whole um, um, service and product to the wrong market. So you actually have to check and see what is the local price point that a market can bear in the area where you're conducting business and then to look at it and see what the needs are of that client or the clients that you want to service and find, as the others have said, the unique selling point that you have in your business and then target it um, and then decide on your price point. That's a really interesting point about the location. So, so you could be offering a quality service in one area and in another area and charge a complete different price. Absolutely. Some really good points there. It really does uh, show the benefits of networking as well. Thank you all. So we've got some more questions, but thank you all for joining us to uh, away from this networking meeting for a couple of seconds. Um, right, let's move on. There are tons of websites, of course, to find out about networking events around the country. This particular one here is at the North Star Pub in Chessington in Surrey. And actually, when's the next one? It's on the 8th of July, which is the last one. And we'll be doing a Latino party. A Latino party at the next... 8th of July. Yes, the Right, and 2014 if you're watching this in the future as well. Okay, let's move to question three. Um, And then also we're going to ask our panellists a tip for you from their sector, which you can use in your business today. So, what would you do if you could start all over again? John from Reading in Berkshire says he wants to set up in business, but he's trying to decide which one. He trained as an electrician, but would love to open a coffee shop. So he asked the panel, how did you decide which business to start? Why? And what advice do you have for him? Electrician or coffee shop? is quite a difference there, isn't it? Let's try, start off with you this time, sir. Well, I mean, my background was in telecommunications, so I moved from telecommunications into wellness. But I did my research on um, what the industry was, where I was going with the network marketing business. Now, if he's going from an electrician to a coffee shop, one of the things that I would say to him is walk up and down the high street and see how many coffee shops there are on the high street. Mm. Um, if you've got 10 coffee shops on the high street and they've only got two people in there at each and every single coffee shop, I wouldn't open a coffee saturated shop. saturated market, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So know exactly what um, competition you have around there. Then look and see what type of coffee, coffee shop you want to open. Mm. So is it a high-end coffee shop? Are you just going to sell beans? Are you going to sort of have um, customers drinking mm. your coffee within mm. the premises? Right. Decide on all those criteria before you actually start opening mm. a, a coffee shop. Yeah. How did you decide? Because, you know, the wellness and health area is, is quite a, a, um, a saturated market in itself. So you moved it into it. You're coming, you're coming with a very analytical mind to this. So how did you approach it? Why did you go, that's the avenue for me in, in that sector? 
Well, I know that um, the wellness sector is a booming industry and it's predicted to be the next trillion dollar industry. Right. So when you're looking at a business, you want to see where is the market growing? Is it a growing market or is it, as you say, a saturated market? Mm. And since network marketing and wellness is now predicted to be the next trillion dollar industry, I did my due diligence and looked at it on the internet, looked at what the experts were saying. Mm. One of the key things is that when you are talking to people about an area that you want to move in, talk to experts. Don't go and talk to your family and friends because they are not the ones who have experienced. That, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they come from a different mindset yeah. and different education. And they're all trying to support us as well, aren't they? But they don't yeah. have the experience. And if I can give you an analogy, if you are going to have heart surgery, would you go and talk to a bank manager to say, is this good de decision <laughs> that I'm making? No, you go and ask for a second opinion right. to another doctor. Yeah. So do the same thing with your business. Yeah. Talk to an expert. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to add anything to that, isn't it, really? Absolutely. But, but Marta, have you got yeah. any, any advice, coffee yeah, shop or, say or stick with electricals? If you want to start a new business, is the business you choose the business that you are skilled in the business or something that is in your heart you always wanted to do. And just to follow uh, Sonal about wh what kind of coffee shop, there is a need at the moment for mothers who used to work full time, now they are mothers and they want to carry on networking with women who are professionals but they have children so they need this kind of coffee shops that they can have a coffee, a decent coffee, decent pastries and network at the same time. So they need a space for the children, a safe space that they will be looked after um, in, a, in, in one side and then mm. they're having the coffee. That is, they should be in every single town in the UK and I think there's plenty uh, to think about that. Uh, and Neville? Yeah, j just to add really, it, starting a new business, you really got to ask yourself deeply, uh, yeah. why am I well, starting it? Uh, why have I chosen that? You know, as we mentioned, is it because it was a good idea? Yeah. My friend does it and it's successful so therefore I think I can do it and be successful. You, you really got to not just go with the flow, but understand why in, in yourself you want to do that. Because once you start, it's not a half-baked attempt, yeah. a, a try-and-see attempt. You have to go two feet in and run at it. I think it's interesting. You go to some events where people are very, very passionate and they want to start a business but they haven't done any research. But you do still need that passion, though, don't you? Because as we all know, once the work kicks in, yeah. if you haven't got that passion you're going to give up yes yeah. absolutely yeah. so so what's our final advice then should he should he go for a coffee shop or or should he stick with electricals what do you reckon I combine both of them yeah well yeah. coffee shop if it's a good one as i mentioned there is a yeah. hole in the marketing let's say yeah I mean, if he, if, he, if he feels that that's where his future lies, then yeah. go for then it. Go for Take it. the risk and go for it. So there's the advice of the panel there. Right, I'm now going to ask each of our panellists to share a tutorial with you. Now, they've been asked to share some tips which perhaps could help you in your business today. So let me hand over to them now, individually. Um, Neville, let's start with you, shall we? What is your thing that someone could use today? OK, in, in life as well, and in business, one of the biggest things that I learned was be more interested in other people than being an interesting person so ask the questions find out about other people when you try to connect and speak because in the end most of your business comes from people who get to know you yeah and they'll only get to know you when you get to know them yeah this is a huge thing about networking, isn't it? Yeah, it's not just about going in there. We've all been to these awful events where you just go, here's my business card and move on fast. And it's when we start chatting that we, well, as we are right now, we're learning things right now Absolutely. from each other as we yeah. do this. Martha, your tutorial for people. Yeah, I think you, if you are running a business, you really, whatever your size, the size of your business, you really need to go out and network and engage with people. Engaging, bonding, working together is the key for success nowadays. Come and join any networking meeting in your area. Mm. Um, go on, just teach us a little bit of Spanish. Muy bien. Regresen, vengan a nuestras reuniones de negocios para aprender más de nosotros. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree. Yes, I agree. Are we in agreement? You are. Agree. We're in agreement. <laughs> well. So now, finally, your, your tutorial for everyone. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> 
For me, I think it is that whenever we go to networking marketing, uh, networking events and so on, it is a question of building relationships. Mm -hmm. And by building relationships with people, you may not get business on the day, but over time you will definitely get the business because you're building up a a common um, understanding of how businesses work and also giving referrals to people. And I think that is one of the key things is firstly to build relationships. And it's a question of know me, like me, trust me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People buy from people they like, Absolutely. don't they, at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So do we like each other? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my Sweet. quick one tip as well um, from a social media point of view is that before you write a single word, and I do bang on about this one, is work out who you're trying to reach. So many people don't. They just go and write any old tweet, any old Facebook update, and then they go, why didn't it work? You've really got to know who it is. I spent eight hours talking to a client over the past couple of weeks trying to get to the bottom of this, and it was worth every second of doing it. Uh, Now, if you haven't been to a networking event, I think you've probably got the point from our conversation today that it's certainly worth uh, coming along to these ones. Chessington, Chessington. go on, just remind us again, Marta. Who wrote Chessington? The pub is called North Star Pub. There we go. Um, If you'd like us to bring the show to your networking event or business expo, whether, as I say, it's a paid event or a free one, then just go to the Shout Pub website and click on the organiser section. That's it for today. I want to thank everyone uh, for being here today, everyone on my panel for uh, giving such great ideas as well. Well, um, I hope we all get to meet you at an event very soon. Until then, have a great and profitable business week. Hasta pronto. Thank you. Hasta what? Hasta pronto. Hasta pronto. <laughs> Over the past few minutes, you've been part of any business questions. Now carry on the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag or one word any business questions or join us on the community just go to google plus and type in any business questions if you'd like us to come to your event too have a look at the business tv section on the shout pal website that's shoutpal.com the business tv section we all hope to see you at the next event